that's the recording. All right, cool. So we're going to look at an outline for what is lead generation, just so I can give feedback. So the first thing I always do when I look at outlines is I go back to the content strategy and look at what the primary and supporting keywords are. In this case, there are none. So I would probably take one step back and fill this stuff out because this is where the search volume is going to come from if you do it right. Uh, this our, our outline is uh, going to come next. So what I will do is I'll go take our main keyword lead generation, or in this case, what is lead generation? Either one are fine. And I want to start looking for semantic or semantic keywords first. So I will go and see the most relevant article here that I can to what we're trying to do. Lead generation. That looks pretty good. See how there's 1100 keywords. We want to make sure that we include those most of those keywords so we can rank for them too. So we're going to make a list of semantic keywords, which I'm just going to do on a text edit fast because it's easy to switch to. So we have lead generation. What is lead generation? If they're ranking in position one for all these terms, it means that they are closely related enough that they can be included in an article. However, if there's a bunch of terms that they're showing up for, but they're ranking in a like a deep position for like 44, then this is probably not a good keyword. Like what does lead to mean, right? It's not obviously. What does lead generation mean? This is an example of a keyword where they probably didn't include it in their article, but if they had, they would have ranked for it higher. They're in position 102 for what does lead generation mean? Because look, it doesn't show up anywhere in their article. So if they had done a little bit better job of putting semantic keywords in their article, they would have been ranking for more stuff. Now that only gets 40 searches a month, so they probably don't care, but the point is still there. So let's go through and continue to do this. So these are the semantic ones. Semantic basically means synonyms. Uh, this is prob this is where SEO gets a bad rap. Like, oh, I don't want my article to sound like I just wrote it for search engines. Hold on, I'm gonna switch my mic. Can you hear me? Yeah. That's, that's cool. Yeah, so this is where People are like, I don't want my article to sound like I just stuffed a bunch of keywords in there. It's like, yeah, I don't either, but you want to include them naturally somehow. How to start a lead generation business. That's more of a supporting keyword because it's like, if someone is searching for what is lead generation or lead generation, maybe they're interested in starting a lead generation business. I would probably write a couple hundred words on this and then link out to a, an article that covers this more in depth. Online lead generation, that would be semantic in my opinion. Sales lead generators. I don't know what that means exactly, but I'm gonna Google it and figure it out because you wanna keep intent in mind. Sales lead generators. So people are looking for tools or ideas about lead generation. This would probably be a supporting keyword and I would write its own article about it. Okay, let me get rid of this shit. Okay, lead generation companies. Once again, supporting, supporting topic that I would then link out to. These are not in order yet, I'm just putting them down. Lead generation strategies, great supporting topic how to generate leads uh, that's it's a supporting topic but it's also semantic so you can put it wherever you want i'll probably put it there lead generation marketing that's probably a semantic keyword you don't have to get too wrapped up on which one is it just do your best it doesn't really matter lead generation examples definitely supporting lead generation process that's cool that could even go like right there now we're, it's sort of looking like we're building an outline, but that's not entirely the, the point of this exercise. So I'm not gonna start doing that. Lead generation services, great supporting keyword, a great thing that you can link out to um, and link, you know, so you can get leads from this actual article. People that want your services maybe. Lead generation business plan, that's a little weird. Plus it gets not much search volume, so. What is a lead? I mean, that's a pretty good supporting keyword right there. If they wanna learn about lead generation, they probably need to know what a lead means first. How to find leads, good supporting keyword. Normally I use hrefs to be honest, to get semantic keywords, but this is just giving me a lot of supporting ones right here, so whatever. How to get more leads, that's probably gonna be semantic. Once again, it doesn't really matter. I'm gonna search, sort by search volume so I don't have to look through so much stuff. See like cost per lead, this is a good example. It's raking 85 because this is not like, you might wanna to touch on cost per lead in your article about what is lead generation, but it's not really about that. It deserves its own article probably because somebody wants to know like formulas and analytics and shit. 
outbound lead generation service. That's a very long tail keyword. I don't know if I would include that. It seems kind of weird that it's that long. How do you generate leads? That's probably like a semantic keyword to that. That's a semantic keyword. And I also, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make this easier for myself and I'm only gonna show stuff that's on page one because the stuff that's not on page one, like offer define, I don't even wanna waste my eyeballs looking at that. So we cut it down from 1600 to 400. It's way less stuff to look at because these are gonna be more relevant. Inbound leads, right? That's a pretty good supporting topic. Inbound versus outbound. All right, I think we've got a lot of the good ones here. Yeah, now we're at 100 search volume. So probably what I would do to, if I would, to recap is put in the, an article that's very relevant to what you're doing sort by positions, what's on page one. If you want to expand that a little bit, you can, like what's on almost on page one and then sort by volume and go through them and it'll be faster. So that's what I do to make these things. And the second thing I do is I actually just Google the keyword because what we're trying to do is create a better supporting list and a supporting list is really what's going to become your outline. So let's see what other people have done in the past and make it better. I usually open up, if it's a competitive term, I'll open up articles from the top, like two, maybe even three pages. Cause sometimes articles are not ranking that are written really, really well. And you wanna, you wanna get the, that information from them. So if I'm making my outline, I would go here and I would say, all right, let's see what we got here. What is a lead? See, that's a pretty good thing to start with. I would probably start with what is, what is a lead? What is lead generation? Like you can see their outline. So if I'm gonna come, come over here, uh, this doesn't need to be an H. This looks to me like this would be an H2 and then this would be an H3, but this needs to be an H2 in my opinion. So if I'm making an outline, this is really what I'm doing is, um, I'm gonna go to my DynaList really quickly and just do a new document real quick. And I would probably say, what is a lead? And to be honest, I think I'm gonna start with in mine, what is lead generation? Because that's what the person searched. So I'm going to probably put lead generation and then I'll put a definition under it. What is a lead and then put a definition under it. In my opinion, it makes more sense to put this one first. Um, and then let's see what like MQLs, SQLs, PQLs, right? So the different types of leads, MQLs, SQLs, PQLs. You're really just taking information that other people have already organized for you and trying to organize it better. That's really what this game is about. Why do you need lead generation? Do I really need to put that in my article? It's pretty obvious. Uh, is it a support? Is it a semantic keyword? Does it have search volume? Those are the questions I'm asking myself. Probably. Yeah, it doesn't have search volume, so I'm not really gonna use that. It's pretty obvious, but maybe like the importance of lead generation, is there something I can put here? People, I think people will realize what the importance of lead generation. So um, what would become, what would be good to come next? What is lead generation? What is a lead? I might go next with, to me, like what makes most sense if I'm learning this from top to bottom, I might go with strategies. Oops, lead generation strategies. That kind of makes sense, like chronological order to me if I'm reading. I think that it's not, maybe the, maybe the process would come next. Maybe it's, it's strategies. One of those, we can organize them later. All right, so these are, these are types of lead generation. Like these are maybe like strategies, right? You can do uh, inbound, outbound. And then in inbound, you would have things like SEO. Um, 
Voilà. Terrible article. But definitely something we can write about. So here's five inbound lead generation strategies. Content, email, podcast, right? And you just start putting those and then outbound, you could say cold calling, cold emailing, uh, advertising and, and build those out. How to qualify a lead, that's interesting. That's probably in the process. Lead scoring, maybe we'll touch on that. Lead generation strategies, I think we already have that. And you know what, I'm actually gonna put this in types of lead generation. I think it's it makes a little more sense to put these here. And then lead generation strategies will be specific things like using Facebook or using LinkedIn. And I like the way that they did that. PPC lead generation, PPP lead generation. Lead generation, they probably have this because lead generation tips might be a keyword, tools. I, I usually put the tools like at the end, that's just a personal thing for me, or at least towards the end. A lot of these will become their own breakout articles. That's interesting. Benchmarks, I like benchmarks. Cool. So we've exhausted that article and I think we like even have added a little bit more to it. So just alone right here, we're already I think building a better article than number one, but we still have like 20 articles to go through. So why is the importance of lead generation? This is two articles in a row that put this here. So maybe we will touch on it. Customer, customer journey, maybe we touch on that. Buyer journey. This is an interesting concept to touch on. I don't think we really care about research. So inbound, outbound, display ads, pay-per-click, content syndications, so direct mail, events, lead scoring, common lead generation metrics. We have the report scoring in here. Yeah, I wonder the process. Somewhere in there, it'll go there. Resources, additional resources, cool, boom. So now we added a couple more things to our article. So by combining what's in the top one and the top two spots, the, the position one and position two. So let's keep going. Nurturing leads, scoring leads, pass along to sales. Okay, so this is like the process. So you wanna go like, a, so we have something about the process, right? It's like how to qualify lead. So acquire, nurture, and it would probably be like first identify, qualify, acquire, or maybe it's acquire then qualify, I'm not entirely sure. Nurture, score, something like that. Aligning your leads to the sales. sales. So we do have the buyer journey here, the customer journey. It's probably, we'll just touch on these things. Of course, they would have their own article because they're pretty big topics, but let's go to the next article now. How does lead generation work? How do I generate leads? See, they just threw those both in there because they know that they're good keywords, but it actually kind of works. I like that. Uh, 
I'm going to copy that, I think. I'm going to put this in here as a reference. Lead generation channels. So they're calling them channels. What did we call them? Inbound versus outbound. We said types. I think channels actually makes a little more sense. Okay, so now we're improving our article. Inbound versus outbound. Touch on that really quickly. So this is the lead generation process. So this is basically how to generate leads. Opt-in forms, oh yeah. So maybe this isn't the process. Maybe how to generate leads can be how, uh, I like how they give you like specific tips, website, Obviously, we would need to rewrite this and add our own and spin to it. Opt-in forms, landing pages and CTAs, of course. This is more of like how to capture leads, not how to generate. But that's fine. Kind of the same thing. Email marketing, retargeting. So that could, that could probably go like uh, somewhere in here. measuring success, right? So we do have a thing about success metrics, right? Click through rate, conversion rate, time to conversion, cost per click or CPM, cost per lead, ROI, I would say LTV and then ROI personally, trends, so chat bots, Trends, maybe that is a good one. Lead generation benchmarks, lead generation tools. I could maybe we put chat bots here. So, and then I would just continue to, I'm not gonna do the rest of this, but I would continue to go through each one of these articles, pulling out the best stuff that I can find and putting it into my outline until I end up with the world's best framework for this article. So if we could just quickly compare this to the other one that we were looking at, let's just see uh, how they stack up. <laughs> So what is the goal of lead generation? What is the lead? Why is lead generation important? MQLs, SQLs. Why is lead generation so important? That's duplicate. Lead generation channels, outbound versus inbound, how to generate leads, cool. Lead generation challenges, lead generation trends. Yeah, so you are definitely on the right track, but as you can see, like, look at how much more beefed out mine is, probably because I have more experience doing this and I can do it pretty fast now. But the idea here is you wanna go through every single article and just continue to pull out stuff that you don't already have that would make, that would um, improve your article. And eventually what's gonna happen is like, by the time you get down to the end ones, it's all gonna be stuff you already have because you'll, you'll just have pulled out so much stuff. But while you're doing it, like this is an awesome looking article. While I'm doing it, I'm gonna take this and on my content planner, I'm gonna add that to um, references, article references that I like. I don't even have a column for that because that one was sick. I also really liked um, this one. So I'm gonna put these on my article references and I'm also gonna put them inside my outline so I remember like where specific things came from. So when I go to write it, I can easily access the stuff that I liked and I don't have to open up 20 tabs again to remember which one was which. But that is the process. So you basically just need to continue to do this for like another hour or two and then you'll end up with an outline like this. Does that make sense? Send me that outline so I can <laughs> add it to mine and then I'll keep beefing it up. But cool. yeah, you're, you're, I see what you're exactly what you're talking about. Cool. I'm going to stop the recording now.